characters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Quickly, because there's just so much to do. INDU, here we go. The Dow is um, down 173 at 33,880. The nine period moving average is still way above the 14 period moving average. That's a good sign. So, the question uh, has to be this is what I ask myself all the time when I'm doing this kind of notation. We did not go above the 34,342 uh, 34, high of uh, mid-December. That was peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. Oh, I should show this. Um, in, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for a, a buy signal, a, a starting point, a low bar that becomes the starting point for a move higher. And if I can just click on this for a moment to get it. Where, where did it go? Somewhere there, I know. Oh, there it is. Okay. And in that context, what we are looking at is from that lowest low bar. Here we go. Oh, got it. Okay. We identify a low bar and then we count each successively higher peak. If that first or second peak or even third takes out the starting point low, it's done. There's no, you have to start again to look for a, a new buy, a buy signal. So as long as that holds, each higher peak gets counted alphabetically, sequentially, A, B, C, D, uppercase on the way up. can go all the way to E, F, and G, but a D, other things can happen. Just keep it as simple as that. On the way down, the lowercase, and it can also go at D, the fourth highest peak, you can get an instant restart, meaning within three bars, there's a higher high that starts a new leg. That leg becomes E, but in your mind, you think E slash A because it could be an alternate count. It's called the Chapman Wave Instant Restart. There are variations of it. I don't want to go into that right now, but I do want to say, here's your peak D. The last high was a peak E at 34,712 on the 13th of December. The That was a double top, and that was the same if you look at the S&P. Remember that? That was something quite quite interesting to behold. Let me see if I'm typing in the right, right place there. SPX.X, there it is. Look at that. You had in the S&P, you had 4,151.51 on the 1st of December, pulls back quite sharply to the 3940s, and then it runs to 4,100.96. How many times over the last year have I been saying them the, I'm, with incredulity? I'm just looking at these charts. So many of them make double tops even after months, sometimes after years, within points of the previous high. And then either they bottoms or, or tops, and then they have a big move in the counterpoint in the counter direction. So look at this. The S&P spiked higher. Now it's gone to a G slash C. Right, look at the chart. This is the S&P. You remember I said gold? I'm Even though we actually bought the short position, a very it's a most horrible instrument. We've used it before very successfully. I tried it again. I was a day early. Sorry, subscribers. We bought the DZZ, which is two times short the day. You've got to almost book an appointment with it to, to buy and sell it. The, the, the volume will increase if this keeps going down sharply. So we had we, we took a little loss. We had a small position, but it was like an insurance policy. But you got that turnaround that spiked to the high. This is a continuous contract yesterday of a leg D. Remember, there's your G slash C after an instant restart, the third highest, the third the second bar off the peak D went to a higher high. So you get alternate count E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and yeah, you get your D. <coughs> Excuse me, got my sneeze out the way. Why? Because, thank you, because in the Chapman Wave methodology, you cannot get an H. There's never an H. That was the technique that I developed years ago. It took a lot to get that. Anyway, so within that context, there's a possibility, just a possibility that in the S&P, and I'll get, I heard the ring. Thank you very much, my engineer, my, my, uh, here are my producer. Yes, yeah, so there's your G Sashi. There's a chance that there's just enough momentum over the next few days to have one more pop towards 4,200 in the S&P 
And then we start a big, and we, we don't have to do it. You can pull back a G. We're watching it very closely. So before we go on, I'm going to say, gee whiz, we've got Larry from Wyoming talking about the UNG. Hi, Larry. How are you? Yes, sir. I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, the natural gas futures, um, if you do those, I think you do, um, uh, yeah, March. Yes. And, uh, well, uh, Larry Pesaveno had a guest on that uh, his range was uh, for this entire sell-off since, you know, July was uh, a range, 2.2 at the bottom. 3.2 at the top. So we're, believe it or not, at the bottom of that range, and it corresponds on the weekly with a, you know, one, a Fibonacci number right now. And uh, I just wanted you to go through your thought process. I, I understand on the weekly you and the monthly you get, before a big move, you get some weeks and months of, uh, tr you know, just a sort of a consolidation zone. But how would you decide to buy just waiting for the nine EMA and so, the technicals? That's my question. You, you know, Thank this you. is a this is a very difficult thing. Everything I've got the on balance volume at about the worst uh, position. Yeah. It so oversold. I've got the stochastic at three point six A in the daily, but I've got the stochastic in the weekly at one point eight five. And all I can say is that this there's something going on. You see, there's a big difference between just a normal technical uh, aspect and then an aberrational. You remember when crude oil went to minus 40 in the futures? Um, yes, I do. <laughs> that was, <laughs> yes. Funny for us, because if you, you weren't in it, that's good. But um, all well, I can I'm say is that... This is really strange. I, prefer, I agree with you. I was wondering what you would say. And I, yeah, I, I, I would, agree. I this prefer. is some sort of strange, eccentric move that I don't know, nobody knows why, right? Nobody. Well, we, I, I, there are people that know why, and a lot of people have been talking about excessivity. There's, there's all sorts of things in the production, there's, uh, in the, in the uh, shipping capacity, just all sorts of things going on. I would prefer to do this. Look, I, we've been talking about this since uh, the UNG was at about 12 or 13. It's trading now at 8.21. Uh, someone in the den a couple of weeks, about a week or so ago, said it's a widow maker. Absolutely. I mean, so I would prefer to look for it. I can just tell you this like crude oil, when this thing t turns around, at some point yeah. it's going to have a whopper of a move and it'll give back all of these, these little baby candles that went down, 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 and the UNG will be trading at 12.55. Uh, boom, just like that. But until yeah. it happens, yeah. you can get killed. So keep your eye on it. I would much prefer, look, at this point, all you're doing is you're trying to catch a falling knife. We used to have someone in the den, Gigi used to say, I will sell you the metal gloves for you to catch the falling knife. So <laughs> it's just not worth trying it. But I tell you what I would do. I, you, you're keeping your eye on it. Uh, I'll go to the natural gas continuous contract. Now, they're all different months and, and the different aspects to it, but I'm just being as simple as possible. And the UNG continuous contract, if that, if that at any point has two sharp candles to the upside, okay. on the third candle, if there's a pullback, I would grab the UNG and I would say, okay, I'm having a tight stop and that's the only way I would play it. I would not play these little niggly down move. I'd wait, Larry, and I'll talk again about it on Monday, okay? Yeah, first pullback. Got you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate that. Folks, Dow down 78. We'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, I thank you, Larry, for the call. I will do this again on Monday, and uh, because we're watching this now, now it's getting to the point where if there is a rally, it's going to be just a brutal rally in the UNT. So what we're looking at, you remember peak D is the objective in the Chapman Wave methodology. You want to go from a, a low point to a buy signal, upgrade to a buy mode. That implies at least four higher peaks peak D. Well, we've got our peak D at about 9.48 or so. Um, in the one-minute chart, pulls back in the E-mini, makes a cup formation. It did make the arch formation. It just failed to get to the, the level that I indicated as a potential support level. And now what has it done? It's gone peak A. Then it pulls back, holds the left side low. So this is a brand new A, B, C, and it's in leg D yet again. But it's gone higher in the, the 10-minute chart. It's gone to a leg B. That has to be considered legitimate because although 8.30 time frames really can distort a lot, we kind of, we're over the whole area of that consolidation from about um, 1 a.m. this morning till 8 o'clock, uh, till 8.30. Actually, yes, right at 8.30. So this is this has to be considered important. Okay, that takes me right to the next thing, which I wanted to do. Um, I didn't finish all the other indices, but I'm going to do that right now because uh, the question came in and I said I'd answer it. I, and the move has been so quick, much quicker than I anticipated, um, that I need to do go right to it right now. And the question was Amazon. At least I hope that was the question. Yes, Amazon. Amazon hit leg C, it hit the 200 period moving average. And the question was, and a very legitimate question, since all the technicals are very positive, do you expect a leg D and how would you play it? And the answer I have is the day is young. There's going to be a lot of whippiness now. We can expect the whippiness because of, of the uh, 830, um, what was it, the, the jobs report, just it scared everything. So that is now active, and we were already oversold, uh, sorry, overbought in many aspects, not all the different stocks, but a lot of stocks. So I don't see any reason why we don't have some kind of give back in some areas. And what I'm going to say to the person who asked the question is that on a trade at 107.79 right now, Amazon down five at 107.72 because I believe this was an add to, I'm not sure if this was an add to position or whether this was, I'm trying to find it here. It came to me, 
uh, in a different way. And now I'm struggling to see uh, whether or not I can get that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just checking to see. Uh, a new position. Okay, for lady. I'm going to suggest right here at 107.75, because you've already had, you've made some money, you have a little bit of leeway. But that's just that just means that as a trade, it's slightly different to if you hadn't owned this. It's just if this was just a fresh trade. At 107.64, I would have a, I'd have a, split, a brand new split position. The one just is right now at 107.67. <clears throat> I might have to say to you, wait the whole day and wait until Monday. Why? Because the day is young. I see a lot of buying coming in. I'm also seeing a lot of selling. So that says the buyers at this particular point, you saw the, the, the one in 10 minute charts, how strong the rebound was. And I had said that I thought that the Dow was now, it had been done. <clears throat> it's done with the letting the leadership take over in the, uh, uh, in the two, with the other indices. And that in, in essence, what we're looking at was, uh, let me just get back to this uh, tiger, yeah. Uh, in essence, what we're looking at is uh, some kind of oversold condition in some areas. Some areas had really strong uh, earnings and, and rallied. Some had lousy earnings and rallied. So this is a mix that we're looking at on a Friday, especially with options, uh, weekly options. So right here at 107.58, yes, start your position. Have enough room in this. This is not your full position. This is just your trading position. I would get some right here. If it starts to rally, and by the, you never know, by the end of the day, if it fills the gap and it actually hits 109, it's a 107.68. 109 is a little high. A 109.33, I would make the stop on the one that I just entered. I'd make it at, I, I'd make the stop well, let me explain. At 109.30, I would add another position. Once I'm in that position, that position has to have a really tight, tight one and a half point stop. That's how tight it is. Because why? We have to go all the way into a wonderful Monday where it just spirals up and it starts leg D up into the 114s. Okay? But the, the, the initial position here at 107.57, um, I would have a, a two-point stop on that. And if it does hit 109, just make, because it's a trade, make it, give yourself a 30% gain as a stop. That's it. Case closed. Hope that helps you. So now that was the one question. The other question, and I just need to finish this up. So the, the QQQ uh, is down. Now it's only down 0.27 at 310.90. Remember, I'm looking at this as a potential G stash C that somehow, some way next week, we just pop a little bit and we go over yesterday's high. If we don't do it today, we do it on Monday, 313.68. Now, some people are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. The dollar is rallying. Isn't that when the market takes a, takes a real big breather? I'll get to that in a moment. What I am looking at here is the QQQ still holding very well. <clears throat> IWM down 18 cents, 198.16, holding very well. The... Um, SMHs, that's the semiconductor index, which had a spectacular, spec, just a spectacular rally from 196 to 200 to 250s. It's trading now down $1.04 at 52.52. Look at this. Yes, this is a Chapman wave inside. This is what I call a parallel extension, but it's not just a parallel extension one to one. It has to have the same angle, the number of bars to get there. Well, it got there in a little bit earlier time frame, so it's accomplished everything. It's got the D, but look, the MACD's good, stochastic's at 88%, on balance volume's at 10, the blue line's a little overboard. The nine, nine, sorry, this is the relative strength index is looking great. Um, the price is way above the nine period moving average, which is way above the 14. All of it's way above the 222, um, 200 period moving average. I like this. It's got a leg D, and did I, didn't I do a weekly chart to show you what I'm looking at here? Yes. Look at this. The, the target should be in February, the high that was made on the week of the 1st of April of two, I can't even say it aloud, 284. And maybe I shouldn't say February. I should say in this quarter. Okay? That's the way I'm looking at it. But I think on a very short term basis, 
We are becoming oversold. I wouldn't be surprised if next week we have some digestive action. Um, that's the way I'm looking at it there. And so I, I just need to finish up. So yes, gold. Has it come back a little bit? No, it's still down 41 at 1888. Darn. And, oh, man, that's so upsetting. I, I, we haven't been into the short position for I don't know how long. I mean, years and years. And then all of a sudden, look what happened. Go, go short and we could take it out. And then that short position was exactly right. And look at this. Look at that pullback. Got the 50 period moving average support and the continuous contract in 1873. I said, why would we trade under 1920? I, actually, I said 1918. That's a big problem. But this is late C in gold, a weekly chart. And look at silver. As we go to the break. Oh, silver. Let me look at SI. Let me do that. Silver's broken down. So silver's down 89 since at 22.72. Uh, I'll be back. Dow is up. Now I was up three and the SP is down 10. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So if you sign up for my newsletter, you'll be able to get, besides my, my calls, of course, my, my, you'll be able to get my, my uh, webinars. And in, in a number of my webinars, I talk a lot about the narrow rectangle formation, how it can go sideways a lot longer than your patients. But then if it pops over the rectangle, um, the horizontal resistance line, or it goes to a D, E, or F, and then comes back and takes out halfway of the rectangle, there's a really good chance not only will it test the low of the rectangle, that is the base horizontal line, but it'll take it out. In this case, that's exactly what Silver's done. Look at that. This is since December. It's been in this range. Uh, that's you know, two months in a range. And then it takes it out. And that just says the 200 period moving average of 22.14, that's next. 
Uh, the weekly chart, or now let me go back to the weekly chart, uh, has made a peak E double top. That was a peak F double top. That just missed making a new high. Um, and that says that this particular candle is a ch so far it's a Chapman Wave Roman candle in the weekly chart. If at any point in the next two weeks there's a day that closes above 24.17 on the continuous contract, it could retest the high. But if it closes within two weeks, it closes two once out of two of the coming two weeks below this week's low, whatever that is, so far it's 22.54, then you have to look at the ma major candle on the left side to see where the low is, because then it says that could re very well be the low, and that's 20.77. Uh, just a, it's, a, it's a consolidation, a big move, and that's what I'm looking at. Just quickly looking at high-grade copper. We want to get to Boston Scientific in a moment. Um, high-grade copper, digesting gains. I always do this when I look at copper because it's international economics, economic activity. I look at wood, which is the iShares. Uh, here we go. This is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Nice rebound. Gone to a leg E, I'm calling it, in the weekly chart, in the cup formation. That usually says if there's enough power, it can actually start another move to the upside. Or it's just a single leg that's going to falter and come back into the, at this point, 79.65, come back into the 76s. So 79.65 is in leg. <clears throat> so I didn't want to really discuss this, but I will. Huh. F. Oops, uppercase. F, and there's another G slash C. So there's a doji candle in wood. That's the global iShares timber and forestry ETF. And this says there's enough strength to maybe make a little bit of a nick to the upside above yesterday's high, and then start another digestive phase. So, But this is fabulous activity. Uh, I, I wanted to just show you, in fact, I'm just going to save this now. I've done so much work, I don't want to lose it. Um, and then, uh, let's see, Paul says, I would start a position today in uh, UNG and only add to it if it goes up. You know, in, in my gut, I'm saying to myself, oh, wow. I mean, right here, especially if the dollar's starting to move, maybe there's a little bit of a relationship because the dollar's done exactly the same thing. No. Remember, I, I, I like to look at it I, for about six or eight months now. I've said, keep all your different indicators separately. When I talk about Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie, I'm talking about bonds, crude oil, dollar, gold, and the volatility index. There used to be a relationship. The relationship used to be that if gold was going higher, the dollar would go down. Well, that's working today, but in fact, in proportion, if you look at this move from the September down to the low that was made uh, yesterday in the dollar, look at this. The rally has been from a little later on. It was actually in November in gold. So there was a period where they're moving in the same direction. So I'm, I'm saying to you, keep it in mind that there are differentiations between what used to be the norm. And also the other thing is that when bonds were going... Um, up, yields would be coming down and that would help the market. Well, we've seen that relationship turned on its head a number of times over the last year and a half, two years. So try to keep things separately. But what I am going to say to you is look at the VIX index. Oh, oh I was supposed to talk about BS, uh, BSX. VIX index has actually gone down to 17. But the aberration of the bear market and, and COVID has said that the normality of being in the nines, the eights, the tens, that's changed completely. And that's the reason why I use my Chapman Wave trend gauge. Let me just have a look at the Chapman Wave trend gauge to see if anything happened today. Um, I didn't even look at it yesterday. No, nothing. Oh, yesterday. Nope, nothing yesterday either. So, um, so let me go back to what I was talking about. I shouldn't interrupt myself like that. The VIX index, this is the new normal. In other words, if it starts from the 18s to really trade, not just bounce once, but trade into the 2180, 2250 area. That's all you need to see and start to hold. We will be coming down triple digits in the Dow 
uh, double digits, a strong double digits in the S&P. That's, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. In other words, the normalcy of what was before going to the March high of 85.47 in the VIX, coming all the way down to the, I think it was down to the 15s, that's changed. But the action of the, S, of the VIX index, it has the same correlation. If it starts to rally very sharply, this market's going down. Right now, it is down 45 cents, down 2.4%. Um, and that's that's a that's a bullish sign. All right, let's get back to our story now. Now I'm going to go to real quickly. Just crude oil is in the lower range. It's just at a terrible time, um, and that's a good sign. That means the jets, the U.S. Uh, this is the global jets ETF, has gone to a leg B uh, in the daily and a leg D in the weekly, and that's just telling you that all this talk about uh, a recession, etc in many ways could be accurate, but the relationship to certain stocks and certain aspects of the market, you've got to try to differentiate. This is bullish. Right now, the Jets ETF is bullish. It's gone above the 2075 high of earlier last year. I think it was June or so. It's gone to a high yesterday. Uh, today it's at 2086. Yesterday it was in the 21s. So far, that's a very good sign. Okay, now what we need to do is, whoops, you need to go, did that, did that, did, have I forgotten anything? No. BSX, BSX, Boston Scientific, up, it's at 48.77, up 70 cents. So uh, a question came in about it, and I wanted to show the difference between a leg C when you're going to all-time highs. And remember, the rule of thumb is a fantastic rule of thumb. What is it? It says that stocks that are making new lows continue to make new lows until there's a major change. Stocks that are making new highs tend to continue to make new highs until there's a major change. So that's what we're looking at. So Boston Scientific is at an all-time high. It's in the medical field area. Didn't I type that in? Boston? I thought I typed that in. I'm sorry I'm typing in the wrong chart. Oh, there it is. Boston Scientific or medical instruments. Um, look at this. The rectangle formation, remember, what's the rule of the rectangle formation? You come down from the flagpole high, you come sharply lower. I'd spoken about this a while, but, but we never got into it. This is a question for uh, a subscriber, just a general question about Boston Scientific. So the rule of thumb of the Boston with the red uh, on, on a down move, Roman candle, is that if it starts to trade in a shorter time frame, halfway into the long bottom wick, the lower wick, the shadow, there's a good chance it's going to test the, the bottom. If instead, in the next 50 weeks, or data bars, it closes above the high that's made the Roman candle, which is right here, it can go higher. And so far, it's gone high. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Let, let me just do this because I'm going to go back to VA Boston uh, uh, Scientific and Obama. Just uh, at this. Remember, we spoke about this, and I said, this is an oval pattern in Web, which is, I think, remember, this is the uh, China, isn't this the, the internet play? I think so. And I said, there's a chance that it has a stalk leg formation, and it's not a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. It should just pop to a higher high, and then come back and retest the body. This is the leg. This is the body of the stalk. You know how it stands on one leg. This is the head, and then the beak comes down, and if the beak takes out the low of the body, uh, that's a big problem. But after it's finished, there could be a big rally. Well, lo and behold, we've got the beak, we've got the big rally, and now we're retesting. So, and it's a, a leg D, probably a peak D today in the weekly chart under the previous high. Uh, and that just says, so it's had a fantastic rally. Now it's time for a digestive phase. So my thinking right here is that if it closes under 33 in the next two sessions, that's not today, it's uh, Monday and Tuesday, there's a good chance it falls into the 32 level, the big gap. Um, as it stands right now, it looks to me like it's a digestive phase and it could last a little longer. If at any point next week it closes over 36.33, I'd say 36.30, so 34.08, that is really bullish. I, I think it's just going to stall for a moment. Now, Boston Scientific, two things I want to look at here. There's a pattern that I, I like to uh, describe. It's called Chapman Wave um, Cup and Ladle Pattern. So I normally do this as it breaks out above the left side peak D. I type in Chapman Wave because under the umbrella of all my techniques, Cup and Ladle. It's not a handle, it's a ladle. Why? It just in, in leg C. It goes right through the previous high, in that case, leg D. I don't even have to put E slash C because the technicals are so strong. The power is so strong. So cup and ladle to, it's at least D, to D, then test of left side support. So I'll type that in. We'll see what happens here. And what it says is that Boston Scientific, the high of the 13th of December of 47.95, that's now your support level. And it should actually, it should try to not touch, touch it before it gets to D. In other words, it could pull back a little bit, then make a D, and then you've got to be prepared that it's going to pull back. That's not bearish, it just means that's the technique that I'd be talking about. Um, okay, that's Boston Scientific. Where's the upside target? So this is the issue that really is the the crux of looking at these rectangle formations. The rule of thumb <clears throat> within a rectangle formation, if you start to see higher highs and higher lows, it can go to a D just, uh, just under, right on or just above the previous high. And that's in this case, it was the high of uh, December of 2019 at 46.62. And then if it pulls back, 
if it takes out, I'm going to make this a thick line. I don't usually like to do that. I do it just once in a while. I do that on silver. I'm going to do it on this and keep it there. Uh, a thick line. If it takes out the midpoint, and usually I do this by eye, and since I've done this so many times, my eye is usually pretty pretty good. Um, and I'm going to make this very thick. Up some weight, and I'll make it thick and blue. I think you can see that. And it says, at any point, if it starts to close underneath, this is after it's made the D, under the close underneath this midpoint line, be careful because it can go all the way to the bottom of the rectangle. Uh, and then, you, then you know, of course, you've still got that Chapman Wave Roman candle, and that will reactivate that midpoint of the wick, which is at 40, uh, at 35.17. So this is the second time it's gone above in a monthly chart. Above the left side high, it went to peak D where just above 47.50. What was I we were looking at? 46.62. Less than less than a point after three years or something like that. Amazing. Two years. And then it pulls back, holds the support level, and it's still walking the nine period moving average. It's not even touching the nine in the monthly. So I'm calling this an F slash C. So this is in the whole smorgasbord of sectors. The medical instruments, particularly Boston Scientific, is doing pretty darn nicely. Okay, I've done that. Next question is Queb. Uh, didn't I just do Queb? Yes, I did Queb. Uh, yes, I did Queb. Uh, FXI, FXI is coming in here. Uh, GT, I don't know what happened to GT. I don't get all those questions about those Chinese stocks uh, lately. F FXI, I must check the time because I still got a ton to do. Yes, FXI is very much like Queb, um, and that's pulling back. FXI is the iShares China Large Cap ETF. Nice move leg A in the in the monthly chart, a peak C in the weekly chart under the previous peak C that failed. So this is just saying um, there is a very strong move to the upside. It's a very it's very overbought. It was very overbought. It's now pulling back, and my eye says. If at 31.46, if it closes under 30 points, oh, 30.65, there's a good chance to test 30 point, $30, which is the 200 period moving average. I could do a left side, right side price time match. I just don't have time for it now because I've got some other questions that came in. Where did it go? Oh, the dollar. I thought I did the dollar. I'll do the dollar again. <clears throat> so this is a nice balance of the dollar. I'm not getting too carried away. And one of the reasons why I'm still looking at the market having some strength to go upside is because this move in, the, in gold was a technical move, number one, because I, in my work, if I did the, I, in fact, I thought I did, oh, I took it away. I had this and then I thought it's looking a little messy and I wanted to see everything. Look at that left side high, around right about the 24th or so of January. Um, and look at look at the technicals, how much weaker it was. That that that's a rogue wave. That spike to the upside. What is a rogue wave? A rogue wave says the the technicals deteriorated enough for you to say, hey, I might be considering shorting. And then as you start to short, I mean, we had this happen in real life. As you short it, the darn thing has this one spike to the upside, and it holds long enough, just long enough. For the shorts to say, oh, I should never have the best sector in the market for eight months or whatever it is. What are you thinking? You're crazy. And and then uh, so they cover their shorts and the longs say, why on earth did I get out? I'm coming back in, even if it's a small position. And the price holds just long enough for those people to do that. By the end of the day, it's a huge red candle. And within two days, where you thought you were right in being short, it's way below that. And there it is. This is exactly what you see. So that just says to me, it's the leg C in the weekly chart. I think we're in it for a choppy period for gold. I think silver is now the weakest. When silver starts to strengthen, wow, silver's now down over a dollar. When silver starts to strengthen, that's going to say, start watching to see if gold can hold. Remember, gold was doing well. Silver was doing lousy. Then silver took off and, and we ran it up. And gold was looking around to say, hey, 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 where's my partner? What the heck? And then it had to play catch up. My rule of thumb is that gold eventually catches up to silver. But by that time, silver's already slowed down. 
and then they both come down together. And that's kind of what I'm looking at the market. The Dow led up, the other sectors were lagging. Now the other sectors have caught up, and the Dow is saying, hey, wait, 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 what's happening here? So now they're trying to find some equilibrium. back in the Dow's up 18. We'll be right back. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, let me just do this real quickly. Toast Inc., this is an all-in-one restaurant. I kind of, is that the one in the mall, the one that's toasted? I think maybe it is. The, uh, the music was a little too loud for my wife and I. You know, when you get on, you don't want it to have it too loud. But it, it was kind of fun. So uh, Toast is trading down 76 cents in 23.98. I've got this as a peak F. I could say it's an instant restart. Just for now, I'm still keeping it as an F. That doesn't mean to say, oh, my God, an F. It just says everything's technically good, but the lettering just says it's gotten to an F, and it's holding pretty well. It is down a little bit. Um, I would say that the key support, and I think that was the question, where's the key support? I would say if it closes under 22, it's at 23.96 in the next week. Next week, in other words, it's done for a little bit and has to regenerate energy. But at this particular point, it's got the energy. It has room for maybe another pop, but I'd say the 25s is probably going to be strong resistance. All right, what are we looking at here? Let me just go to my chart. Of course, I was busy here, so I couldn't do any trading at all. There's your peak G, and I've got this written in and the daily chart. Uh, this is the uh, one minute. It's pulling back. I would say 41.65 is trading at 41.81 today. 41.65. If there's a pullback below 41.65, just be careful because 
don't forget, this is this is a response, a lot of a response to what happened yesterday in the general market and with with Amazon. Let me just do this real quickly. I meant to do that. Let me just have I got to everything that I said? No, of course I haven't. So okay, let me just do this real quickly, and I'll tell you that. Um, there we go. Apple, Apple is now up five at 155. Uh, leg E. This is a good good sign. Then I've got Chapman Web Inside Track resistance coming in at about 160 next week. It's trading at 155. That makes the 200 period moving average of 147. Very strong support. Amazon, Amazon even after the earnings is now just down five. I think it's going to try for that leg D. And then at my stall, I think that even if we have a bounce next week, I think it's going to start maybe sideways action. Number one, the rest of the weekend tomorrow's. Uh, Live webinar, live is followed by a live video.